Grace and peace to each one of you in the name of the risen Christ. Good morning, Danville Congregational Church. We are an open, that was good, we are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. And we want you to know that whoever you are, however you love, however you understand your gender, your identity, wherever you find yourself on life's journey, you are welcome in this space. For this is God's church, and all are welcome here. My name is Todd Atkins Whitley. I'm the associate pastor here at Danville Church. Our senior pastor, the Reverend Eric Sherlock, is away this weekend and will be back in the office on Tuesday. To our visitors, whether you are visiting here in the sanctuary or you are joining us by Zoom uh, online, you are our honored guests. And we hope that those of you who are visiting, who might be visiting here in the sanctuary, that you'll stick around and let us introduce ourselves to you. And for those of you on Zoom, we hope that you will introduce yourselves in the chat so that our folks can introduce themselves to you. So our tech minister today is Shai Stickler. Shai, how many uh, connections do we have this morning on Zoom? 20 so far. 20 so far. All right, a little slower morning on Zoom than usual. So for our younger friends, we plan to have time with children, um, uh, plan, plan to have godly play today following our time with children. Uh, there's a children's library in the back, some activity bulletins back there if you're interested in using those until uh, our time with children this morning. Uh, later in the service this morning, we will hold a time of prayer where we will lift up one another's joys and concerns, and so if there is something that we can hold in prayer with you, please write that on a prayer request card. Those are located in the pew in front of you, or for our friends on Zoom, just type your prayer requests in the chat anytime during the service, and we will include those in our time of prayer as well. And as always, Pastor Eric and I are always available to you should you be in need of prayer or conversation or companionship, so reach out to us. There are multiple ways to get a hold of us, and we encourage you to do that if and when the need arises. Following our worship this morning, we will have a time of coffee, conversation, and community. A little side note, there aren't root beer floats back there today, but there's a lot of cookies um, and plenty to go around, so please stick around and let's fellowship together. And for those of you on Zoom, as is our practice, we'll open up breakout rooms so that y'all can uh, visit together as well. And just a note about masks, uh, grateful for people uh, wearing their masks inside the buildings uh, at all times, just out of an abundance of caution and compassion for folks. We have a few announcements this morning. I'm going to invite Doug to come up and talk to us about the backpack drive. And as he comes forward, we want to remind you that the anti-racism team is meeting today. That's on Zoom. Um, the link is in your bulletin and your e-news. And uh, so check that out at noon today. All right, Doug. Good morning. This beautiful little backpack is for a five-year-old kindergartner named Nyalani, uh, and this was provided by Dee Brook. Dee, if you're on Zoom, thank you for this. Um, this is the first of the backpacks for our Shelter Inc. kids that has been uh, brought to DCC. Um, we had 12 uh, kids that, uh, we, whose names we got from Shelter Inc., and we're, we've got them all covered now, which is a good thing because uh, Thursday is the deadline for, return, for, for bringing those completed backpacks uh, to Danville Congregational Church. However, there are still opportunities to sign up for a backpack for uh, kids under the care of Hope Solutions, and uh, to bring, uh, that's, that, that would be an assembled backpack like this one, or just to bring, uh, uh, you know, whatever school supplies you decide to shop for and, and uh, buy separate school supplies for Eden UCC, who will be running a backpack giveaway on August 10th. So the deadline for that is still a few weeks in it uh, from now, August 7th. Uh, I will be, if you have any questions about that, I will be out on the patio um, during or after worship, and if you want to sign up for any of those remaining options, sign-ups are all online. I can help you with that if you want me to, but uh, sign-ups are online. You need to go to the, the DCC e-news for the links to the various sign-up options, or download the bulletin on your computer and look for the links on page 11. You can, look, you can, look, you can refer to page 11 in your printed um, 
bulletin, but you need to download one if you want to use the links. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. I've said before, and I think it bears repeating, that the gift uh, of, of school supplies and a backpack, that's a very practical gift for a child, but it does something more than provide the things that they need to learn. It also provides them with a boost in self-esteem. They get to go to school with a brand new backpack and brand new supplies. And so I'm always in awe of the generosity of this church since we, since we joined here uh, at how many backpacks and how many school supplies. And so uh, gratitude in advance for your work in making sure those kids go to school with a, with a new backpack and the supplies that they need. Uh, just a reminder, August 7th is our back to school blessing where we will uh, be providing a blessing to everyone going back to school. I hear the groans from children everywhere that that is already happening. Uh, that's also going to be the day of our all church barbecue. Um, so make a note, be thinking about what potluck dish that you're going to bring. And we're also looking for a couple of griller types who might bring their barbecue grill and grill up some hot dogs that day. And if uh, you're interested in that, look out. Uh, you can let me know or Kim Michaud or uh, Carrie Hrusis. And uh, just one other note, our music director, John Kendall Bailey, is away on vacation with his new wife and his family. And we are delighted to have Jacqueline Chu with us today providing music. Um, not only this is, and Jacqueline is the sister of, of our friend Janice. And we, uh, I think, have heard her before in this sanctuary. We're grateful that John has had an opportunity to be away uh, with his family and also that we get to still have music and worship. So could we appreciate Jackie for being with us this morning? <laughs> Beloved friends, those are our announcements. I invite us together now to just center ourselves in this worship space. Joining our hearts with our friends who are on Zoom, our friends who could not be with us today, our friends who may be grieving or finding it difficult to be. And in that spirit, let us take a deep breath in together. Breathing in the love of God and exhaling the spirit of peace. Please stand for the call to worship. Um, holy God, you invite us to come to worship you. Holy God, you invite us to come to worship you. Holy God, you invite us to come to worship you. Peace be with you. And also with you. Those of you worshiping via Zoom pass the peace of Christ with waves and smiles and by using the chat feature. And those of you in the sanctuary, let us greet one another and pass the peace of Christ as you are comfortable doing so.
All right, you may be seated. I'd like to invite our younger friends to come hang out with me if they want to. Got a new book, a newish book that I'll share with y'all this morning. Hey, Zane. Good morning, Aria. Even though you're in the youth group officially now, thanks for coming down and hanging out with us. Hey, Max. Hey, Serena. Hey, Max and Serena's mom. So this is a book called When God Made You. Have you ever read this book before? It's pretty cool. I might want to put this on your birthday list. Um, it was written by someone named Matthew Paul Turner, and it's illustrated by someone named David Caltro. and I thought I would show you their pictures just because I think it's really interesting when you see the pictures. This is Matthew, and this is David, so he drew the pictures. Okay. All right. Let's see about this book. I think the grown-ups are going to like this book, too. Also, look at that drawing on the inside. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. I'll put this back in here. When God Made You is the name of the book. You, you, when God made you, God made you all shiny and new. An incredible you. A you all your own. A you unlike anyone else has ever known. An exclusive design, one God refined. You're a perfectly crafted one of a kind. Because when God made you, somehow God knew that the world needed someone exactly like you. You, you, God thinks about you. God was thinking of you long before your debut. From the very beginning amid history and time, you, little one, never left God's mind. God imagined your eyes, your heads, shape and size, and knew what you'd look like when you felt surprised. God pictured your nose and all ten of your toes, the sound of your voice. God had it composed. The lines on your hands, your hair, every strand, God knew every detail like it was all planned. Out of billions of faces from cultures, all races, people God made from all different places. God knew your name, your picture is framed, God's family without you would not be the same. Because when God made you, this much is true, the world got to meet who God already knew. You, you, when God sees you, God delights in what is and sees only what's true. That you, yes, you, in all of your glory, bring color and rhythm and rhyme to God's story. So be you, fully you, a show-stopping review. Live your life in full color, every tint, every hue. Discover, explore, have faith, but love more, and learn and relearn all that God made you for. Use your talents and passions, those gifts that God fashioned. Think up ideas, then put them into action. Because God loves you creating your true self displaying when light on the inside through art is portraying. When you make believe, the stories conceived, the heroics, the magic, those tricks up your sleeve. When you dance alone, spinning like a cyclone, being whoever, whatever, in a world all your own. Thank you there. She's creating. God smiles, and here's why. In the spark of your eye, a familiar reflection shines bright from inside. Because when God made you and the world oohed and awed, in heaven they called you an image of God. I love this book so much. You, you, when God dreams about you, God dreams about all that in you will be true. That you, God's you, will be hopeful and kind. A giver who lives with all heart, soul, and mind. 
a dreamer who dreams in big and small themes, one who keeps dreaming in journeys upstream. A mover, a shaker, a lover of nature. A builder of bridges, you, the peacemaker. A you who views others as sisters and brothers and lives by three words, love one another. A confident you, strong and brave too. You being you is God's dream coming true. Because when God made you, heaven was beaming over you. God was smiling and already dreaming. Did you like that book? Yeah, it's a pretty great story and i read you that book today to remind you there's one particular page in here that i wanted to point out so be you fully you be who god created you to be because remember we're all different we have different color eyes and different shapes and different color hair but we, you, are an image, a reflection of God's self. And what those of us behind you and in front of you, your church family, one of the main jobs, one of our most important jobs, is to make sure that when the world, or if the world, tries to tell you that you're not, or maybe that you're less than, or that you're not good enough, our number one job here is to keep you from being distracted by those messages and for you to remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully and beautifully and fantastically made in the image of God and nothing will ever, ever change that. Okay? That's a, that's a thing that us grown-ups might want to remember too, right? Amen? <laughs> so I wonder, before y'all head off to godly play, oh, and let me... Let me um, Talk about godly play for a second. So y'all have been studying the Lord's Prayer and godly play for, this is the fifth week, right? So next week is, is the sixth week. Guess what Pastor Eric is preaching about next week? The Lord's Prayer. So maybe next week we'll talk about what you've learned in godly play with Miss Jen and some of our other friends. So before you head off, let's pray together and you can repeat after me if you want to, okay? Dear God, Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for our families, for a church that loves us. Thank you, God, for creating us in your image and loving us so much. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks for coming down, y'all. We'll see you later. Scripture lesson comes from Luke 10, 38, 42. Hear these words. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat at Jesus' feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, but few things are needed, 
needed indeed only one. Mary has chosen the better part which will not be taken away from her. Before we get started this morning, I'm going to issue this disclaimer. <clears throat> this will not be a six-word sermon. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Uh, and just want to thank all of you for last week participating in that exercise. Uh, it remains uh, a blessing and a highlight of my worship experiences here among you. So thank you for participating and uh, for listening and thinking deeply. <clears throat> Distracted. Do you ever find yourself distracted? Hang on, hang on a sec. Oh, wait. Um, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I live in a world of constant distraction. My engagement with the present thwarted continually under attack by a multitude of stimuli. <clears throat> Anyone familiar with that? Some of these distractions, well, they're, they're inadvertent. I don't mean to let them draw my attention away. Some are incidental, a byproduct of my engagement with the world around me. And still others, well, they are intentional, designed to take my focus away from my purpose and my presence. Now this could well be a sermon about distractions caused by these palm-sized microcomputers, or it could be a sermon about focusing on our interpersonal relationships. But today, I want to address the kinds of distractions that hinder me, that may hinder us, from being the people in the world God filled us with the potential to be. Well, that is, if I weren't, if we weren't so doggone distracted. First off, I want to say that not all distractions are negative. In times of stress or fatigue or burnout, we can benefit from something to distract us from what's dragging us down. For example, I remember in particular how much of a distraction my young sons were for my mother as she grieved the loss of my dad. So sometimes distractions can be useful. Now in the introduction, I, I noted at least three kinds of distractions. Inadvertent, incidental, intentional. Gotta love the alliteration, right? Those that are inadvertent. The preacher is really boring, and you start to doze off. Okay, that may not be the best example. How about a perfect sunny afternoon and ideal beach conditions on sermon writing day? Now, there are those that are incidental, the kind that, that come from, say, having kids or having a TV or a smartphone. If you have one you're going to be distracted. And a third category, intentional. The ones we choose or the ones we allow to sap our potential and our purpose. It is the distractions in this third group that I want to spend a bit of time focusing on in these next few minutes. Young people tell me about distractions from studying or papers that they have to write. We know a thing or two about distractions from chores that we have to do. And there's that video game console sitting there just whispering for us to engage with it. Or the TV or social media. Have you ever gotten on Facebook or Twitter or something? For, you're just going to do one thing. What? One thing. And 45 minutes later, you're still scrolling. Does any, that happen to anyone else? Or have you ever been with someone who does this at dinner? Or while you're having a conversation with them? Miguel? 
I want to talk about distractions that fill up the thinking space in our minds, preventing us from dealing with something, that displace our attention so we don't have to do something, that pull us away from what's really going on, the distractions that impede the expressions of God's kingdom right here in our midst. But first, let's dig in to this interaction between Martha and Jesus. So has anyone ever experienced a situation like the one that Matthew read for us this morning? You're getting ready for a big dinner or for company, or you're working on a group project at school or work. Oh, I hated group projects. <clears throat> you're working in the kitchen or cleaning the house or working out in the yard or getting the patio just right, and other folks just aren't doing their share, if anything. This doesn't happen at our house, though. <clears throat> Super frustrating, isn't it? I don't know about you, but my interaction with the perceived loafer is, well, less than graceful. <laughs> but this morning, I, I want to invite us to look more deeply into this text. Because before we can focus on the essence of what Jesus says here about the things that distract us, a reframing or an unlearning of the interaction between Martha and Mary and Jesus, well, that might actually be helpful. You see, this is not a story about being more Mary-like when so many Martha activities pull us in every direction. <clears throat> Yet, predominant interpretations of this text often pit one woman against the other, almost as if it's a gendered thing, as if male-identified people don't have this same kind of experience. Or they suggest that one way of being is superior to the other, say, the spiritual versus the practical. As we dig into this text, I want to reread it using another translation done by a woman named Mary Stromer Hansen, who analyzed the original Greek text and came up with this. As they were on their way, Jesus came to a village where a woman named Martha received him. She had a sister called Mary, who also was one who sat at Jesus' feet, always listening to his words. But Martha was constantly torn apart concerning such ministry. She suddenly approached Jesus and said, Do you not care that my sister regularly leaves me to minister alone? Tell her, therefore, that she may give me a hand. But Jesus answered her, saying, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and agitated concerning much. But only one thing is needed, for Mary has chosen good, not the better portion, but has chosen good, and it will not be taken away from her. Now, that's a subtle translation, but I, know, I don't know if you noticed a few differences that this scholar gleaned from that Greek story. I find this translation helpful because, as Stromer Hansen points out, it doesn't pit sister against sister, nor imply that a contemplative life is preferable to a life of service. Martha was a follower and a listener of Jesus too. Rather, this interaction with Jesus invites Martha, who appears to be distracted by envy and comparison, to consider her intentions for doing what she does. And notice that in this translation, Jesus calls Mary's, action, Mary's actions good, not necessarily better. Okay, so let's see if we can hear this story differently using a more modern day example. This story includes two folks who I ask their permission uh, in advance to include in this sort of retelling of this story. As they were on their way, Jesus came to the town of Danville, where he was received by many of his followers who gathered at Danville Congregational Church. Now, at this church, there were many people engaged in ministry and in the worship life of the congregation. One was Brett, 
who attended worship regularly and was very involved in taking care of things around the church campus. One day, it so happened that Brett was cleaning out the gutters and walked around the building and happened to look into Pastor Eric's window and noticed Heidi sitting in Pastor Eric's office and they were talking and visiting and Brett noticed that and wandered on around and continued his tasks. And as he was finished a couple of hours later, Brett walked back around the building and noticed that Heidi was in Pastor Todd's office sitting in his chair and they were talking and talking and Brett thought to himself, hmm, that doesn't seem right. And Brett was constantly torn apart concerning much ministry. He suddenly approached Jesus and said, Do you not care that my sister Heidi regularly leaves me to minister alone? Tell her and the others, therefore, that they may give me a hand. But Jesus answered Brett, saying, Brett, Brett, you are anxious and agitated concerning much, but only one thing is needed. For Heidi has chosen good, and it will not be taken from her. Okay, quick disclaimer. Brett would never and has never acted that way. But he's good-natured, and, and I knew he would be cool with me putting him in that scenario. But the Brett in this story, in this retelling, well, he has been distracted from the intention of his tasks, from the reason he is doing them in the first place. And he also fails to do at least two things. First, he fails to acknowledge that although Heidi was visiting with the pastors, she is also doing the financial uh, work of the church as financial secretary and is regularly also at the church performing those tasks. And a lot of people don't see that. And second, he fails to remember that though the tasks he performs are beneficial to the church, sometimes it's also good for his own spirit to spend time in conversation with his pastors and others regarding spiritual matters. See, I don't think this is a, an either-or kind of story that Jesus is saying one way of being is superior to another. Rather, this is a both-and story kind of situation that Jesus is talking about talking more about the intent of our actions and their alignment with our being intentional about nourishing ourselves in sort of a reciprocal kind of cycle you see Martha was distracted from the intent of the tasks that she was doing performing acts of service to all the members of and the guests in her household Y'all know this, if a host of people shows up at your house, well, some things got to get done. It's not that Martha should have left things undone. Rather, she, she allows envy and perhaps comparison to distract her from the intent of what she was doing. And it was probably also a hat tip to Martha's nature that sometimes she, too, needed to take a break and sit at Jesus' feet and receive. Does that speak to anyone here this morning? It sure does to me. And by contrast, Mary did not allow herself in that moment to absent herself from an opportunity to hear Jesus. And I think that if all Mary ever did was sit around and listen to Jesus, well, we might have a record of a conversation between her and Jesus, too. Look, there are simply some things that got to be done. Lunches to make, toilets to clean, checks to write, gutters to clean out, and on and on. And there are also going to be opportunities for books that need to be read, conversations to be happened, study to be done, things that need to be unlearned. Both kinds of tasks are necessary. And with this story, Jesus reminds us of the value of being aware of the presence of distraction so that we can make sure that we're present to the value and the opportunity of each. Not tallying our tasks and acts of service and focus on what everybody else is doing or not doing. 
and not to miss out on opportunities to continue to hear, to be present to what Jesus is saying. Now, with all that said, here's what my heart is calling me to respond to this story with. My six-word thesis. Within Christianity, we have become distracted. Let's say that again. Within Christianity, we have become distracted. Looking at the history of Christianity and the history of this country, including the history that we are presently living within, we can observe that Christianity and many disciples of Jesus have become distracted from those teachings. Horrifying things have happened in the world in the name of Jesus. Horrifying things are happening right now in the name of Jesus. And so as we think deeply about this interaction between Martha and Jesus and how it might relate to us today, I wonder. I wonder in our acts of service and doing good for others, are we so distracted by our completion of them, by our satisfaction from doing them, that we fail to address, we fail to pay attention to the systemic causes that continue to require such acts of service in the first place? Jesus told his friends, the poor you will always have with you. I think he said this in part because he knew of the power of systems and structures that are designed to ensure that some people remain poor and marginalized and oppressed. As we discussed last week in talking about the man from Samaria who helped the injured man on the road, and as Dave Hill reminded me this past week, the Samaritan was putting a Band-Aid on the problem, an unsafe road, when what was needed was to make the road to Jericho safe. To wit, if we only give money to organizations and let them do the work and go about our lives without a second thought, if we only march in parades and carry signs in support of women's human rights and against racism, but fail to educate ourselves and commit ourselves to actually being and demanding and forcing change into actually happening, well, then we are distracted. And I also wonder, for those who read and study Jesus' teachings and have an ear open for how those teachings can shape the world around them, have we become distracted from, these, from what these teachings actually call us to do? What is, I wonder, the correlation between sitting at Jesus' feet and what we do about gun safety when we leave here? About praying the words of Jesus for God's kingdom to come here on earth, and what we do about sexism and racism anywhere it has taken root. About believing deeply in Jesus' revolutionary concept of neighbor love, and about protecting the most vulnerable out there. Because if we are only reading about the teachings of Jesus but not working to affect them in our own lives and in the world, then we have become distracted. The story of Martha's distraction, it's a both-and kind of story in a binary world. It's a reminder to us that both acts of service and moments of contemplation are good. It's a reminder that both listening 
and doing are important characteristics of a follower of Jesus. And it is a reminder for me, for us, to continually interrogate the distractions we choose the distractions we choose and the distractions we allow to passively, we passively allow to claim our attention, our energy, our spirits, keeping us from seeing what's really happening and thwarting the power that is within us to transform the world around us. People of God, we are worried and distracted by many things. As far as it is within us and dwelling always in grace, let us choose intentionally what is good. For it will not, it will not be taken from us. May it be so. As we enter into this time of prayer together, for those of you who have written a prayer request on a card, would you hold those up so that our ushers can collect those? And for those of you who are gathered with us on Zoom, if you would make sure and type those in the chat, we can include your prayers as well. Friends, let us enter now into the solidarity of prayer and let's begin with a moment of silence.
in peace, we pray to you, O God, with all our hearts and with all our minds. Let us pray to God, saying, hear our prayer. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, hear our prayer. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, hear our prayer. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, hear our prayer. For all who are in need of healing of body, mind, or spirit, and for all who suffer, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and those in need, hear our prayer. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, hear our prayer. For our pastors, our leadership team, our commissioners, our lay leaders, ministers, and all who serve God in this church, hear our prayer. For the special joys, needs, and concerns of this community, we now attend, starting with the prayers from our friends on Zoom. From... From Brett Clark, please pray for a successful hip replacement surgery for our 45-year-old nephew later this week. God, in your mercy and healing, hear our prayer. From Eileen Ackley, a prayer request for Nancy Lujak, who took a tumble earlier this week, spraining her ankle and wrist, sitting at home with her leg propped up and wishing for ice cream. Today is National Ice Cream Day. <laughs> God, in your healing and great joy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> From Cheryl, please pray for my mom, Ruth Halmo. She just celebrated her 100th birthday a week ago and tested positive for COVID this morning. God, in your healing and great love, hear our prayer. <clears throat> From Eric Stein, prayers of concern for the media companies of America. May they cease to act as if advertising for anyone who pays them is a healthy capitalist neutrality. Let them understand that advertising products that promote violence is advocacy of violence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Chris Rowan asks for prayers of guidance, patience, and peace for his sister Jenny and for him as they seek an assisted living option for our older sister Gretchen. She can no longer live where she is and has limited financial resources. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Kristen Chambers asks prayers for her friends uh, Jason, Kay, and Carly, all of whom have COVID. God, in your mercy and healing, hear our prayer. She also asks for prayers for her friend Kaz, who is fighting breast cancer. God, in your healing and great love, hear our prayer. Miguel and I ask for prayers for our grandson Dawson and his dad, who have COVID. God, in your healing and mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> we thank you, O oh God, for all the blessings of this life, that your very image is stamped upon each one of us. We pray for all who have died, that they may rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but only eternal life. God, let your loving kindness be upon them and fill us with assurance that we will see them again. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. Shield us from distractions. Cover us always in grace. Use us to reveal your kingdom and transform the world around us. 
In your compassion, forgive us our debts, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our sibling and friend who taught us to pray, <clears throat> our loving God who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Offering to God, remembering Jesus' words from everyone to whom much has been given. Much will be required, and one from whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. For those of you who have already made a gift by check or automated giving, we are grateful. If you like to make a gift today, please leave it in the plate in the back of the sanctuary as you leave or give using our website. God, use our offerings of money, time, and talents to enliven your church, to give courage to a world prone to disencouragement, to enable a spreading of the love of Christ. May all our gifts and our giving be acceptable in your sight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
beloved friends, as we head out those doors, distractions await. And so may we hold fast to the teachings we have heard at the feet of Jesus and commit ourselves to living them out beyond the distractions. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace that by trusting in God you may overflow with hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen.